Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm here to present my paper, which is cyberbullying detection using ensemble method on the third international conference on data science and machine learning. Myself, Sharon Yanad. I am a recent graduate from Galton University in Canada. I did my majors in computer science and yeah, here we go. So our main agenda of this presentation is to give you a background and motivation about my paper, the major contributions that I have done on this work, our proposed approaches for the cyberbullying detection, the various experiments that I have performed, followed by the results analysis, and a conclusion and future work slide as well. So the main background and motivation of our work is basically depending on the machine learning algorithm and the deep learning techniques. We know that support vector machine has been widely used in text analysis. It is because that the computational complexity of SVM is lower when compared to the deep learning models and it provides a more straightforward interpretability. So the SVM have proven to perform effectively on smaller data sets and high dimensional spaces. Our second model, which is based on distilled BERT, is a currently emerging state of the art transformer models. And they are derived or the distilled versions of BERT, which is the bidirectional encoder representation from transformers. Uh, they have been widely used uh, in tasks such as question answering, language inference, without any considerable architecture modifications. And the distilled model has been proven to be 60% faster and the model size is reduced by 40% when compared to the original BERT models. Uh, so the, but the distilled model have much lesser parameters compared to the other existing models such as BERT large and Robert A. The recent works or the existing works on these fields have been maximum done either using the machine learning, deep learning or the word embedding techniques. So our study is mainly focusing on combining these models to see how the combination of different models would help us to achieve the aim and by leveraging their capabilities. So the major contributions that I have done as a part of this paper is a detailed literature review on the cyberbullying detection. We have implemented multiple models, basically five models, and these models are depending on the traditional SVM model, the distilled model, and a stacked ensemble model. The experiments have been performed on a newly generated social media data set, which, I, which I'll be explaining. I have also done a comparison of different levels of feature extraction techniques using the TF IDF models on SVM. Basically, I have used different granularities of feature extraction techniques, thereby evaluating all the five models that I have developed here. So to begin with, any machine learning algorithm or process would always have a data pre-processing step. So the original data set was cleaned as mentioned in this slide, wherein we have removed the blank rows. And since Python considered the uppercase and lowercase characters as differently, we have converted all the text to lowercase. We have then fed this to a tokenization module, which was performed using NLTK module and the word tokenized module. After that, the tokenized words have been fed into a stemmer, the process called as stemming. So basically the word stemming is performed to reduce the inflectional form of words to a common base word. Stemmer uses a single word without analyzing the context and the process words can have actually different meanings. To avoid this and to overcome this, we have fed them to a lemmatization module. The word lemmatization is similar to stemming. However, in this case, the word context is maintained. So after all this pre-processing, the data has been stored in an Excel sheet and this is called as the process data. As I said, the data set have been generated and uh, it followed this criteria. So we were basically using an email data set wherein we had columns from and to, and these columns were derived from the Enron email data set. And the data set was generated by using the from and to columns, which were randomly selected from the Enron email data set. The body of this email 
chain is selected from the Twitter and YouTube parse data set which are originally derived from the Mendeley cyberbullying data set. So these data sets were available in Kegel and from Kegel we have downloaded this Mendeley cyberbullying data set and made use of only the Twitter and YouTube parse data sets. They were actually labeled and we have neglected these two data sets and these data set along this constitutes the body. The body column contains the Twitter and the YouTube parse data which are actually labeled originally and the contents of this body column acts as the email body node experiments. The label values are stored as label in the columns and the null value rows of this data set was removed. Finally, after removing all the null values, we have a final data set of 15,000 rows with four columns. This gives us a preview of the data set. So this data set has from and two columns, as I said, which was derived from the Enron email data set. And then we have a body which actually contains the cyberbullying and in our non cyberbullying contents and then a label column. This slide uh, explains you about the different EFID of vectorizations and how could, you know, we can take into picture the different granularities and by taking into consideration the different token size. So we know that TFID is a simple and proven method for text classification. So instead of simply counting the words, which would overemphasize the frequent words, each word is weighted by its relative frequency. So the TFID of features informs the model if the word appears more often in a comment than usually in the whole corpus. There are three types of TFID of uh, vectors that could be generated using the different granularities. One is the word TFIDF, the other one is the n-gram TFIDF, and then the char TFIDF. So in word TFIDF, we make use of the metric representation of TFIDF scores of words. In n-gram TFIDF, this could be a combination of n number of words. And in character level TFIDF, we could take into consideration the TF scores of characters, which could be a combination of n numbers that we could define. So this TFIDF vectors and their different granularities have been used in this traditional SVM models, which I'll be explaining. So after we have imported the packages for all the models that we have developed in this work, we made use of the common testing and training data set. We divided the initially processed data set in such a way that the testing data set contains 20% of the whole data and the training data set has around 80%. So the algorithms were chosen based on the nature of the problem that is either the binary uh, because in our case it's a binary classification and the performance of the models based on the previous research we have come up with this SVM model. So in the SVM model, after we have divided the data set into testing and training data set, they have been fed into a TF-IDF vectorization module, which as I said, had three different granularities. And after the modules have generated the TF-IDF vectors, the training data set have been fed into SVM for training the model. And this classifier made use of the testing data set TF-IDF vectors for our prediction. The second model, which is based on the transformer model distilled BERT, is a bit more complex when compared to our traditional SPA model. So as I said, we have the same training and testing data set throughout all the models. And this training data set is fed into the first block, which is called as tokenizer. So this tokenizer takes care of the BERT requirements. It transforms the sentence words into an array of distilled BERT tokens. It also adds a special starting token, which is the CLS token, and it adds necessary padding to have a unique size for all the sentences. So in our case, we have set this as 32 in our experiments. The tokenizer will then feed the sentence arrays into the distilled block. So the distilled is a fine-tuned model uh, that outputs mainly a vector of length 768, which is the default length. Since we need to adapt this output of the pre-trained model for our specific task, that is the cyberbullying detection, a third block, which is a linear layer, is applied on top of 
this distilbert transformer and this is used to generate an output of vector size 2. So the index of this maximum value of the vector generated from this layer represents the predicted class ID. We train the model for three epochs in case of distilbert using Adam as an optimizer and sparse categorical cross entropy was taken into consideration to estimate the loss during the training and the validations. <coughs> Sorry. The last model, which is based on ensemble approach, in the stacked ensemble model, we have ensembled our SPM and the distributed models using an LR model. So to give you a background about what ensemble model is, ensemble learning is a machine learning research area where different models are trained to solve the same problem and they will be combined to get better results. So it is proven that the ensemble models normally tend to outperform each of the individual models in terms of accuracy and other parameters and robustness, etc. So our goal is to benefit from all the features of a classical ML model uses and the contextualized knowledge that a transformer model reliefs, reveals aiming to improve the performance and stability of the model. We have two models which are based on two completely different approaches. One is based on the textual features while other is based on the transformer's ability of language understanding. Since there are two heterogeneous models which are based on two different approaches, we chose to use a stacking ensemble model to combine their predictions. Here, as we are dealing with a binary classification problem where the input features are independent, logistic regression was used as a meta model for combining these two base models. So we will generate two stacked ensemble models. The first ensemble model will be having a simple TF IDF of words with the distributed model and the second ensemble model will be the TF IDF modularity of all the words, characters, and grams on an SVM along with the distributed model. So the various experiments that we have performed using these five models are we did a performance of different feature extraction tokens on SPM. We did the performance of the Distilbert explained, verified the performance of Distilbert model on the social media data set. We identified the impact of ensembling these two base models to generate you know, better results. We have also compared the base models with the corresponding ensemble models and an overall comparison of all the five models. So this gives us an overview of the result analysis of the SVM model. The SVM model using TF IDF of words gave us an accuracy of 85.53 percentage, whereas the SVM which had the different granularities of TF IDF gave us better parameters in terms of all the four evaluation metrics. It gave us a better accuracy of 88.1 percentage and a very better recall rate of 71.71 percentage. .71%. So here I have illustrated the various word and gram combinations and their accuracy. So the base model which have used TF IDF of words gave us the best accuracy when the word and gram was set as one. So if it is like more than one words, if it is two, three or words, two or three words, or if it is a sentence, then we saw that even though there is not much of a difference, but then the accuracy was decreasing and then there was fluctuations overall, right? So what we have decided is the word and gram was set as one and then this gave us the better accuracy. <coughs> when it comes to the SVM TFID of combinations of all these uh, granularities, we again did a comparison of various word engrams and character engrams. We set the word engram as 1 in this case and then the character engram was incremented sequentially. We saw that the highest accuracy was achieved when word and one word was taken into consideration and the character length of five, that is a five letter word was taken into consideration. We also did a study wherein we sequentially incremented both words and character and gram counts and we saw that compared to our second table, the, there was a decrease in the accuracy 
thus we have concluded that the best accuracy of the traditional model was given when the word limit was set as 1 and the character length was set as 5. The, this slide gives us the performance of the distilled word model. So the distilled word model gave us an accuracy of 87.53 percentage with the number of true positives 640 count and the true negatives were 2011. The reason, <coughs> excuse me. So the reason for such a drastic difference is because as I said, our samples, we had only around 4,000 number of positive samples in our 15,000 total data set. Now, since the distilled model was trained and evaluated using three epochs, we came up with the training and validation accuracy and loss plots for all the three epochs. We saw that after every epoch, the training accuracy was drastically increasing and the training and validation losses were drastically decreasing. However, the thing that we have to note here is while we were training the distilled bird models, each epoch took around 10 minutes and in total, the three epochs have taken a time of 30 minutes every time for training the distilled bird model. So this could be a bit of a drawback when it comes to the pre-trained language models. So here, this is the final ensemble models which we have generated and the ensemble model 2, which is a combination of SVM that has three levels of granularities of TF-IDF and the distilled model gave us the best accuracy of 89.66 percentage compared to the, all the other models that we have generated. However, even though the accuracy of the ensemble model 1 is a bit less when compared to that of ensemble model 2, we could see that the number of true positives identified is higher for the ensemble model 1 using the SVMTF idea of words. This gives us the comparison of the true positive and true negative values. So in our case, the true positive is important considering the very small samples that uh, we had. The number of true positives have been identified the best by the ensemble models in both the cases, even in ensemble model one and ensemble model two. And our traditional SVM models have always exhibited a higher number of false negative values. This gives us an overall comparison of all the five models that we have developed. So when comparing the parameters of ensemble models with their base models, we could see that all the evaluation metrics have achieved the best value when compared to their base models, except for precision. The distilled bird model, which is the pre-trained model, have the best precision when compared with all the other models, which is 91.17 percentage. Wow. To provide you a comparison of all the five models that we have developed here, uh, the major findings are the distilled bird model have exhibited the highest precision and ensemble models tend to outperform all the evaluation metrics or outperform the base models in terms of evaluation metrics except precision. The TF-IDF vectors of word, characters, and engrams fed to the SVM performed well when compared to the simple SVM TF-IDF feature set. And with the increase in the number of tokens fed as features, traditional models perform better when compared to the models built using a single set of features. Uh, the combined TFID of vectors and the still bird model, which had the inbuilt word embeddings, exhibited almost similar accuracies. And in this scenario, the, where the distal bird model had taken much time for training purposes, the combined TFID of vectors would hardly take five minutes. So the training time is also less wherein we are getting the similar accuracies. And addition of different tokens as features acts as a substitute for the word embeddings while implemented on smaller data sets. Also, we could find that ensemble models can be used to develop systems with better accuracy and they exhibit better performance than the individual models. Combining the base models helped in leveraging the capabilities of models 
and in improving their performance. So to conclude, uh, the models that we have discussed here were based on traditional machine learning algorithms, which made use of different tokens on feature extraction and the recent state of the art word embeddings. In our models, each in our experiment, each models have provided a considerable performance. Everything was more than 85 percentage, all the accuracies. So we developed an ensemble model combining the two base models, which were completely based on two different heterogeneous approaches. The traditional machine learning models require feature extraction techniques for better performance and the distilled part embeddings have inbuilt tokens and because of which there doesn't need any explicit tokenization. Also, the SVM model when combined with the vectors outperformed the simple SVM TF-IDF model and the distilled part model had the best precision. We have also identified that stacked ensemble models outperformed in terms of accuracy, recall, and F1 score. The ensemble models uh, using the combined vectors of SVM and the distilled model have given us the best accuracy of 89.6%. So these are the major conclusions of our work. And the future work that we have proposed is an application which could be used as an email system that prevents cyberbullying messages and protect children. Since we have made use of an email kind of data set which we have generated, this could be extended to use a specific email properties such as a receiver sender list and then kind of implementing a dynamic labeling so that we could track from which specific sender or receiver is having most of the cyberbullying attacks or you know more, more of the threats are coming from. So inclusion of such a real-time labeling could help us to prevent them from sending such messages. And then uh, we have made use of a fixed length of training and testing data set. However, we have to evaluate the model performance uh, using the various undersampling or sampling techniques. And we hope to see some sort of changes in their performance. So this is the work that we have done. And I thank you all for your time and have a good day, everyone.